Well, good morning or afternoon, depending on what time you are watching this. Welcome to a introduction and brief uh, video on looking at the syllabus uh, and, and I guess a brief overview of conflict in Europe, which is our uh, international kind of conflict study. Let's begin by having a look at what the syllabus says. The principal focus uh, for this unit is for you to investigate the key features and issues in the history of the conflict in Europe uh, from 1935 to 45. So it's a 10 year period. Uh, 45 is the end of war in Europe. 35 is obviously a couple of years before the war began, which was in 39. So it's looking at kind of the lead up and then the war itself. So what are the key features and issues? Well, they're there. So we've got the causes of the conflict. Uh, that's pretty self-explanatory. Aims and strategies of the Allied and Axis powers. That's looking at uh, what did the, the Germans and their allies and what did the, the English and the French and the Russians and the Americans, what did they want to get out of the war? What were they trying to do? And what was their kind of overall strategy to trying to win the war? Uh, so that's, yep, that should be quite interesting. Uh, turning points of the war, so a little bit of historiography there with people disagreeing about what exactly they are, uh, but, but we'll look at a couple of different points where where you can you can safely say it was a very important uh, battle or campaign which which turned uh, the war in the favour of the Allied powers over the Axis. Uh, we'll look at the impact of the war on civilians, so we'll look at uh, two home fronts and what the war kind of did to civilians in those home fronts. Uh, we'll look at the origins, nature and impact of the Holocaust. Uh, we've looked at most of that, we'll do that briefly. Uh, and reasons for the Allied victory. That's mainly historiographical and that's uh, looking at why we won. Growth of European tensions, that's the first of the four points. So dictatorships in Germany and Italy. We'll pretty much skip over Germany because we've already looked at it. So we'll look at Italy with uh, Benito Mussolini uh, and, and how uh, his dictatorship led to a uh, more tension in Europe. We'll look at the League of Nations and the failures that that, that had as an organization. Uh, we'll look at the uh, collapse of what's called collective security. That's the idea of uh, nations working together to make sure, uh, like in a diplomatic way, to make sure that everyone's safe and that war does not occur. So we'll look at the invasion of Abyssinia by the Italians, and we'll look at the Spanish Civil War. We'll then look at the British, French, and uh, and their policy of appeasement. So we'll, we'll assess that. Note that it says an assessment. So we're not going to look at a huge detail in it. We're trying to assess um, how that policy contributed to the growth of European tensions. And finally, we'll look at the significance of the Nazi-Soviet non-aggression pact. Uh, so for the majority of this build-up time, the West pretty much assumed that Hitler would get too big for his boots and that uh, Germany and Russia would fight it out. So as soon as this non-aggression pact was signed, uh, all of a sudden the West stood up and took notice and went, oh my gosh, uh, it looks like that's not going to happen. Moving on, the course. So this is just basically what happened in the war. So first of all, we've got the German advances. We've got the fall of Poland, which, was, which happened first. Uh, the low countries, Belgium and the like. Uh, and then finally, France. Uh, a spectacular victory there, which no one uh, saw coming. We'll look at the air war and its effects. So first of all, the Battle, battle of Britain, uh, when uh, Germany had taken over all of Western Europe, uh, then they turned their attention to England, the island obviously, not a part of Western Europe. And we see this uh, kind of long running air campaign to try and soften them up and try and get air superiority so that there was not much of a, a kind of air force left in Britain so that they could invade and it didn't actually happen. Uh, after that, we'll have a look at the bombing of Germany. So when when uh, the US joined the war and when things were going a bit worse for Germany, huge campaigns right in, in, in the bombing of Germany itself. Uh, we'll look at Operation Barbarossa. That's uh, when Germany invaded, uh, in a surprise, invaded Russia in 42. We'll look at the Battle of Stalingrad, which is the, the largest battle that's ever been fought. Um, which was obviously in the city which Stalin named after himself uh, and a huge victory eventually for Russia. 
Uh, so that was quite significant to the Russian campaign. We'll look at that. Then we'll look at the Battle of El Alamein, which Australians fought in, a very significant battle in North Africa. And we'll look at uh, a bit of the intelligence uh, and what basically happened in Northern Africa, because um, it was a key part of being able to secure North Africa for the Allies so they could kind of use the Mediterranean Sea to start attacking kind of up, up in the belly of, of the German uh, Empire at the time. Moving on. Civilians at war. So social and economic effects of the war on civilians in Britain and either Germany or the Soviet Union. Well, obviously, to Germany, because uh, we know it quite well, and it'll, it'll, there's a little bit of overlap. Uh, for example, the Nazi racial policies, the Holocaust and the persecution of the minorities. So that'll tie in well with Germany, and we'll do Britain and its effect uh, on Britain as well. Then we have the end of the conflict. So D-Day, that's the day uh, when the uh, Allied forces attacked and uh, invaded the uh, Western continent of Europe and managed to get a kind of a bridgehead there uh, and then fought from then on in right into um, yeah, Germany proper or the German Empire proper. They liberated France. And uh, then we see the, the, uh, the Russian counteroffensive was in 1944. Very important there. They call that the, uh, the Russian steamroller. They started going during the counteroffensives of 44 and they just could not be stopped. And then we see final defeat in 1944 to 1945, and we've pretty much already looked at the Nuremberg War Crime Trial. So that's the end of the syllabus dot points for this unit. Overview, I'll just read this. So essentially this study picks up where we left off at the end of Germany, with the world in 1939 on the brink of war, due in large part to Hitler's aggression and the appeasement policies of the Allies. So conflict in Europe, 39 to 45, refers to World War II, but only from a European perspective. So we, we, we do know, obviously, that there were two theatres uh, in Europe. So you've got Europe, Middle East and North Africa, and the Pacific, where the US and Australia fought against Japan. Uh, so we're looking at the major events of the European war involving the major European powers, so Germany, Russia, Italy, Britain, mainly. All right, so there's your, your overview. Here's the actual theatre of war. So you'll see mainly uh, it occurs kind of when we talk about Northern Africa, it really is kind of, you can see from Libya to kind of halfway through Algeria. That's the main area that we're looking at, um, and just usually the coast and a little bit down into the desert. Most of it's desert, so they're obviously not plunging way down into the desert, nothing much there. What they're wanting is ports so they can use the Mediterranean Sea. That's what they're looking for. Uh, so we've got that, we've got Italy, obviously, a whole lot of battles taking place there. Uh, Normandy landing up there below Great Britain. And then you'll see over in the Soviet Union, we've got a couple of places there. Kursk, a big battle happened in Kursk. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you where the other battles took place in the Soviet Union later on. There's the Pacific Theater of War. We don't need to know too much about that. Just showing you what really happened. Um, yeah, exciting stuff. So the causes. First area syllabus deals with the causes of World War II. Some of this we've already looked at. Uh, we do have a number of other areas we need to look at, so this is what we're going to start with. So we've got uh, things I've already outlined there. Uh, we'll begin by looking at each of the four issues separately, but then we will need to assess the significance of each for the overall development of the Second World War. So you might you might be able to uh, you might have to say the dictatorships were the greatest, you know, had the greatest significance on the start of the war. Or really, it was the appeasement policy rather than dictatorships, etc., etc. Okay, so let's start with an activity that we'll do in class. What do you already know about the causes of World War II? Let's list them in your book, and we'll discuss them as our first lesson. Thanks for listening. Hopefully, that was a bit of information that will give you a nice overview of the topic, and we'll enjoy looking at World War II together as a class. Signing out, Wimble.